community. How are you today? It is April 13th, Monday, April 13th, 2020. Um, and it feels like Groundhog's Day again. So here we are. Uh, but uh, to start off, really want to recognize a couple of things. Beautiful uh, holiday weekend for many people out there. I hope you had a wonderful weekend, had a chance to uh, connect with family. I would say spend time with family, but really it's about connecting. We did some virtual meetings with our families last night over dinner, and it was it was very nice. Um, and I hope you had those opportunities to do that as well. I need to start today just saying that we, we know New York, we know the numbers are outrageous. We know the impact is tremendous. We know that the uh, the weight of what is going on right now is huge in so many directions, health wise, financial wise. Um, people just feeling comfortable wise. It is it is a tremendous experience. We're with you. However, we can help. Please don't hesitate to reach out. And so uh, just know that that that, that the slog continues. And we're, we're arm in arm with you in whatever way we can be. All right, hard pivot from that message into just reviewing what the days over the weekend were. Of course, there were the religious holidays. But there were some other days. On Saturday was National Pet Day. White Horse, I'm disappointed. You can come back on White Horse. That was quite, that was days like. Oh, days. I am ready for National Pet Day. Trust me. If, it, if that was today, you would. Listen, well, it just, happened on just, Saturday. You I know. I, I didn't miss it. Trust me. All right. Okay. You missed it. <laughs> nice, <laughs> ridiculous Easter bunny in front of you, by the way. Uh, then it was National Grilled Cheese Day, also over the weekend. Really solid day. Followed by on Sunday National Licorice Day. Shout out to my dad, loves black licorice. I once read that it's not healthy for you if, if you eat it in a large amount. So dad, just watch out for your health. Um, and then Saturday was also, Sunday was also walk on your wild side day. And that's kind of fitting because we have the language department here. So I'm glad that they're here immediately following the uh, walk on your wild side day. That feels fitting. And then yesterday was also national. Oh, oh, now it's on April 13th. And there's four or five important things that are going on. Today is National Thomas Jefferson Day, third president. Uh, I wrote, once wrote a paper on the enig en enigmatic moment, uh, a nature of Thomas Jefferson. Certainly an enigma. High, high ideals on one side and some questionable behavior on the other side. Uh, make lunch count day. That feels like it's just rubbing it in. Uh, National Peach Cobbler Day is today. So get your peach cobbler at all the fresh farms that are open on the East End. Ouch, that one hurts also. And then finally today is National Scrabble Day, which I bet there's a bunch of virtual apps that you could call somebody up and play. So keep that in mind as we get going in today. And last but not least, today is my, my youngest birthday. Hayes Cook turns three years old today. He is Oh, uh, he was born on Friday the 13th. That is quite a fitting date for his birth. That's all I'll say about that. I love him as I do. All right, we're going to get started here. Allow the, the department to come on and say hello. Uh, Christine Walsh, you want to jump on in? Say hello. Hey, bonjour. Very nice. Can you hear me? Yes, very cool room you got there. I like it. Thank you. I've... Uh... Binders I've taken my office back from my daughter. She used it for organic chemistry all weekend. Nice, nice. So I've got it back. Excellent. Danielle Cardi, come on down. Good morning. What's up? Uh, Geronima. Geronima. Sorry, buenos dias. Excellent. Great, great video, cooking video I saw, by the way. Gracias. Uh, Joel. Good morning. J-Dubs. Buenos dias, everyone. Happy Monday. Yeah. Also, Happy. Mr. Cook, you've stirred up a lot of controversy with your, your chef versus superhero question. And, you know, studies are showing right now that you were very, very wrong and people are very <laughs> upset. So... Joe, by the Might day we are trying more and more to live in the present moment. I just want you to. to, to I'm living in the present. Okay. I just I'm presently very upset with your answer still. <laughs> From the past, good. Joy. <laughs> I just want to say you can't make this up. Good morning, Vic Gates. <laughs> Christy. Buongiorno. Excellent, Lisa. Joy Dallas. left out some French greetings there. Not fair. 
Yeah, she's got she's uh she's she's got some bias, I think. Lisa. Good morning. There she is. Uh Simone. Bonjour. Uh Mary Beth. Buenos dias, feliz lunes. Nice. Nice the nice the decor behind you is very comforting. Norel. Buenos dias a todos. Everybody. Scott. Buenos dias. Hi, everybody. I miss you guys. What's up? And Tim, I love when, when directors finish off the list. That's awesome. It's actually really well fitting. Go for it. Bon, bonjour to le monde. Hello, everybody. Hope you're all doing well and uh, staying healthy and keeping yourself occupied. Yes. Yes. Nice jersey behind you, too. Couple, any multiple. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Pegley already started a war, so I had to uh, put some, some more Mets gear behind me. Got it. I was driving this weekend, listening to the radio, and David Wright came on and did like a, uh, you know, a car commercial, and I was like, Eesh. I guess that's good for him. You know, he's going to become like the local guy. It just means, you know, fall from grace is pretty strong, I think. Yeah, well, at least, at least he's keeping busy too. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, excellent. That's right. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, um, my son this weekend, we ordered a game called Conversation Starters. Right, so. You, you have this thing and you pull it out. It's like a, a list of questions and I'll give you an example. We're not going to do this one, but just so you have a sense. So, uh, okay. Uh, like if you could dress your mom in any outfit that you think she'd look good in, what would it be? That's, that's a weird question, but that's kind of the idea. And you sit down with people and you ask these questions. So we're going to do that today and we're going to, uh, then have the, the department round on it. Um, and we'll see how we do. So without further ado, today's question is, what's your most prized possession? What's your most prized possession? All right, so let's jump into it. Christine Walsh, do you think you're, you can answer that question? That's a no brainer. That's my children, 100%. <laughs> I love it. Just like the ownership. I own my children. That's beautiful. I, 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 I wouldn't be what I am without them. Yeah, it's beautiful. It is. It is. Danielle, what about you? Well, she stole my answer. I had to think about that. Like, do I own them? Are they my possession? And then absolutely, yes. <laughs> so my children, I own them. So yes, they are my most prized possession. I think maybe we should pivot the question to be like, at what age do you no longer own your children? 25, 30, 35. <laughs> sure. I'm still paying the college loans, so I own them. Yes. Yeah, that's what I would say. Whenever the, the, the bank of mom and dad closes, then then that's maybe when it ends. I think that's right. I, what did I, uh, it's, a, it's all about preparing for the launch, somebody told me recently. And I was like, what's that? It's like the moment where they are no longer your financial responsibility. Very true. Yes, very far away from the launch here. Uh, Geronimo, what about you? What's your most prized possession? Uh, I uh, I struggle with this question. I uh, don't think I have one, uh, but I would say um, special rings and clothes that I have from my mother. Beautiful. That would be it. Beautiful. That's really great. Joel? Uh, mine would be some artwork I inherited from a beloved aunt who recently passed away. So I have a lot of her beautiful artwork. That's awesome. J-Dubs? Yeah, so uh, thank you, Frenchie, for starting off with the possession of children, because that would be my answer, too. Um, mine, I think he's still financially reliant on me at this point. Um, but if I'm not going to go with children, I'm going to go with the dog, which I tried to get him to come here for the a video cameo, but he's being a little sleepy right now. So, Where would that Easter Bunny rank in terms of your most prized possessions? Well, I don't know if you've Give noticed, but this is, this is the third one. I have... I... <laughs> couple different characters here for uh, the video this morning. These are not really mine. They have appeared in my house and I don't know who gave them to us, but they're kind of cool. So they're probably top 20. Top 20. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think yeah, I would put them top in the top five. five. No, but they're That's pretty cool. What? It'd be like your, your son, your dog, your wife, and then the, the bunny. son, dog, wife, probably house, maybe car couple computers maybe the tv but these are somewhere in there yeah probably are you around saying like, that your wife is your possession uh, you like how i queued that up for him and he just oh. that was so 
Chris Cook <laughs> queued that up. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> We're both financially reliant on each other, so by, you better by mute. Meta you better Walsh's... hit mute now. Yeah, we did mute. I love how he just went with it. That's good. You're in trouble. Joy, <laughs> Run with what it. about you? Well, I really wasn't looking at uh, my family as a possession. Um, you know, it's definitely my son is my cherished um, individual and my dogs but i would say a possession i was thinking of something that's material so that would definitely be my mom's wedding ring beautiful beautiful christy yeah i was along the same lines with um joy i wasn't really thinking about my family or my children but my prized possession would be my teacups that my grandmother left me beautiful nice nice uh, commonality here about how, you know what about your banner in the background uh, yeah i got that for um t mac beautiful all right, Lisa, Della, go for it. My daughter is married, so now it's my grandson who's my possession. <laughs> <laughs> and he's my everything. Oh, my God. It's just so great when it goes to grandkids because you can give them back at the end and say, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Simone. Well, my adult son told me yesterday I do not own him. My husband and I disagree. But uh, anyway, my prized possession probably is the jewelry I inherited from my mom. That's beautiful. Good stuff. Uh, Maria, welcome to the table. Maria, what's your most prized possession? My most prized possession would probably be a nativity um, set that my mother got for me over in Spain. Um, she was on one of the first flights that was allowed out after 9-11. Wow. Um, yeah, it's a large row one. They sent it piece by piece due to customs. Back here, I mean, it took like six months for the whole set to get here. Beautiful. It's and absolutely beautiful. When do you put it up? What What is the like day that you're like, all right, I can put the nativity scene up? Probably about two weeks before Christmas. Okay. Okay. Mary Beth. Okay, so as far as possessions, um, hard to pick one thing, but I have always loved actual physical photographs and um, you know, nowadays we take so many pictures with our phones. We post everything. I'm a total over poster on social media, as some of you may know. Um, but I hold those photographs, uh, especially the black and white ones, my grandparents' wedding photos near and dear to my heart because they just, um, they're just super special. That's awesome. Cool. Narelle. Hey everybody. Uh, I would say uh, these journals my grandmother wrote um, in the 60s and 70s about like her life and her travels. Um, I love reading them and it's awesome to have her thoughts on paper. So I would say these journals my grandmother had. That's really cool. Scott. Um, let's see. My son, I, I think that uh, I'm probably his possession at this time and not the other way around. Me and my wife are pretty much controlled by him. Um, I would definitely say, uh, Mary Beth, I was thinking along the same lines, my photo albums. Um, I have old school physical photo albums that go all the way back generations. And uh, they're the only way I get to see some of the people that have you know passed and are no longer part of my life and things like that. So. I cherish those. Those are definitely something I like to look back on every once in a while and uh, kind of reminds me where I came from. Beautiful. Thanks for going deep. Um, and T-Mac, what's up? So we have a special guest. We have Alley Cat here who never, never hangs out with me and now she's around. So Alley Cat wanted to say hi there. She's taking off, it looks like. Um, uh, possession, I probably, I mean, obviously family and everything, but um, not, but aside from that, I would say a watch that my wife gave me on the day of our wedding. So I'd probably say that she had a little inscription in there and the date that, that we, uh, that, and she said, I'm yours. That's what it was inscribed in. And that was the name of our song, our wedding song. So, um, and I certainly don't own her. That's a fact. So <laughs> Though the watch might suggest otherwise. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> when, yeah, when I when I want to think at that, that I just look down at that. But uh, no, not so much. So, but uh, definitely the watch. It's pretty cool. I just try to think of something that I'd be really upset if I wouldn't have it. And I think that a lot of people have hit on that, whether it be family or. 
things that are passed down or, um, you know, I play hockey. So I thought about a hockey stick, but I could live without a hockey stick The watch. I'd be upset. Yeah. By the, uh, by the day, I think I, I don't really have so many possessions anymore that I'd be too, too upset about, but I'll tell you a quick story. Andy Besher noticed behind me, there were, there's some cars there and he asked the question what those are. And th- so the story is I'm not really a car guy, but my grandfather passed away in, in, in uh, in summer 2015 and that Christmas he had already sent some cars um, to my son Coleman. And so Christmas, my parents had kept it on the side and we opened them up and he gave us like 15 of these old school cars. And I had no idea that they were done. And it was an act he had done prior to even being sick and passing away in the summer. And that Christmas, we just got a big uh, batch of all the cars that he had kept in his house to give it to my son, uh, which was really cool. So those are what's behind. Those are some of the cars that are behind me. All right, so uh, I like keeping it light here. That was a fairly heavy round. I blame the cards. Um, so we'll just do a quick one, and you got to think on your feet. And now I'm just flipping through it. So the, the one is, if you could be a superhero, which is White Horse was mad and he was upset. So I'm going to go back to the superhero thing for a second. If you could be a superhero or have a superhero power, what would it be and why? And you got it's like a speed round. So you're going to, and I'm going to go through it pretty quick. So get in your head. If you could have a super, superpower or be a superhero, who would it be? Or what would the power be and why? All right, we ready? Making it through some wait time, wait time, wait time. Christine, go for it. Uh, first, I don't know. I'm not super into superheroes, but I would say if I could have a power, it could be the time travel. Time travel. All right. Danielle Cardi, what about you? Dang, well, she keeps stealing my thunder. Um, if I was a superhero, I guess Wonder Woman, because I used to have a pair of Wonder Woman underoos when I was a kid, and they were the coolest thing ever, if anybody remembers underoos. And yeah, time travel would be my superpower for sure. Nice. Traveling back into the past as, as Wonder Woman. Got it. Geronimo. Um the uh, self-transportation uh beam me up scotty kind of thing so i could travel and i could go home anytime and all over the world geronimo if you could beam anywhere right now where would you go barcelona barcelona great joel telepathy let's go with telepathy that doesn't surprise me joel (laughs) yeah yeah so uh I think flying would have to be mine with a close second being teleportation or time travel, but it's going to be flying. Got it. I want to say, I want to have the scenic views as I'm traveling wherever I want. Is that a duck now? This is a, uh, a baby chick. Yes. Oh. Where does that fall on the, uh, the possession list? Is this that is like, like top 30. 18? Top 30. Okay. Good. Yeah. Joy. 26. <laughs> Definitely flying. Flying. Christy. Definitely. Uh, I'm going to go with healing. Yes, Sorry. healing. I think that's a good one. Lisa. Lisa. Sorry, my sound. Walsh keeps stealing my answers, but okay, I'll change it and I'll go with um, Invisible Woman. So nobody will know I'm there. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. I always think that one is devious. Simone. I have a superpower. I'm multilingual. That's there you what go. <laughs> the plug for the department also. That's yeah. right. Um, I, she's not a, a superhero, but I would be I, D- Genie from I Dream of Genie. I don't know if any of you are old enough to know that character. That's what uh, I would that's, be. That's the second time I think I Dream of Genie has come up on this call in like a week. This is interesting. I'm tr- I'll try to remember the, the, uh, the last one. I think Khaleesi brought it up. Maria. Yeah, so I would love to be invisible, be in a room with, a bunch of my kids and their friends oh, yeah. and just kind of watch and see what's going on. <laughs> that is devious. A devious mom right there. Mary Beth. Okay. So I'm going to throw it back for the eighties kids. Um, who remembers she princess of power? No, I guess. Come on. Thank you, Joel. All right. Um, but as far as that actual super power, I don't know. I would say, super speed just because i always feel like i have so many things to do and if i could just get everything done faster like that mountain of laundry that'd be super hold on mom i'm on a call i'll call you back 
That's funny. We don't. I didn't even know we had a house phone. It just started ringing. That's funny. All right, uh, Narelle. Uh, I would say I think like reading minds. Um, that professor character from the Marvel movies. I think that would be a cool. Yes, uh, that's a good one, Scott. Um, let's see. I think I would like to live forever, at least centuries and centuries, without getting too much older than I am now so that I could observe society and civilizations and all those type of things as they go forward into history, you know, 500 years from now, a thousand years from now and see where we all, uh, all end up. Awesome. T-Mac. Wow. How do I follow that deep, uh, inspiration by Mr. Mr. Scott Kraft? I probably would do a similar thing as uh, Mojo and I would, like to fly i've always been kind of enamored by flying and seeing birds fly and being in an airplane so that would be number one and uh two as well and in, in time travel that would be um that would be fun interesting a lot of departmental themes here i like it um all right guys so the final round is is something uh just gives you a chance to give a shout out to somebody in your life or somebody that you're thinking about or a group of people that you're thinking about so we've had people go all sorts of directions on that there's not a lot of uh, prescribed ways you got to go with it, but really just you're, you're having a chance to give a high five or a hug or a fist bump to people out there in your life in one way or another. Uh, and that's how we, we wrap it up. So Christine, start us off. Okay, well, putting my family aside on this one, because um, we're separated at the moment. My daughter is actually stuck in France. I'm going to say the kids. I miss my kids. We send each other messages. My kids at school. I miss them a lot. I miss catching up on their daily lives and finding out what's going on. So I would say shout out to all my Frenchies. I miss you. Awesome. Danielle. Um, ooh, that's a hard one. But I guess I would like to virtually hug my friends and colleagues in Germany. I miss them dearly. They were supposed to come visit us, but that won't be possible this year. So virtual hugs. Cool. Geronimo. <laughs> Hi, I would like to uh, hug um, a specific students, the ones that they're either sick or they lost a grandparent um, and they cannot grieve the way they would normally grieve. That's that I, the, the kindness out of that is, is, is deep. Thank you. Joel. Um, I'll go with the essential workers, people that still have to, you know, get up, drag themselves to a building and put themselves at risk, whether it's food or, or medicine or anything like a lot of admiration for those people. Yeah. J dubs. Yeah. I'm going to second what Joel said, but I'm going to add in, um, especially to the medical professionals that are on the front lines trying to help people every day. Um, our aunt, well, my wife's aunt, um, told us some stories about things she's dealing with. Um, she's a nurse and it's just, it's impossible to imagine. Just want to give a hug to everyone that does that. Awesome. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to all the students who are involved in the book club. Uh, we've been uh, keeping uh, in touch through the GroupMe app. And I want to say a special shout out to uh, Shivani for putting that whole uh, club together and keep reading, guys. Good stuff. Christy. I want to give a shout out to our students that are working. Uh, I've gone to the food store in the past and seen many of the cashiers and people stocking shelves, and I know they're learning how to navigate working and still doing schoolwork now. Yeah. Shout out Lisa. Them. I want to say a shout out to my favorite Frenchie, Walsh, over there. Miss you, Walsh. <laughs> You're not supposed to have favorite kids. I miss kids you here. too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. That's. That's favorite kids. You're not supposed to have favorite kids. You can have favorite, favorite teachers, I think. Uh, Simone. Shout out to all of my students who are finding this social isolation very difficult. And a shout out especially to my son who is self-quarantined in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Shout out to him. That's tough. Maria. Yeah, I would say a shout out to respiratory therapists. Um, a cousin of mine yesterday said, you know, we're not the front line, we're the last line. Hmm. And I think they deserve a lot for that. That's, that's, a, that's a tough phrase to hear. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, Maria, we got to pause for a second. What did you make yesterday? What I, 
<laughs> um, you know, it was really kind of cool because two of my children were not here. And they have their own apartments. Um, we all had antipas. We all had lasagna. We all had stromboli. And it was really nice because we did it virtually at the same time. Wait, wait, wait. So your, your, your offspring made these same dishes yes. in different places separate from each other? Yes. Oh, Except my one, one of my daughters who she, she's struggling to cook, made lasagna. Her and her husband were sitting there eating it, and she said, I forgot the regard. Mm. Mm. That's tough. I mean, it's not the same without the regut. Can you just At say that again for right Mr. Though. White? Yeah, yeah, Mr. White, of course, you heard that, right, regut? I'm pretending not to, but yes. And Maria, can you say any pasta again? Because that was, I think, just furthers the uh, the conversation. Here. What antipast? Antipast. I love it. Exactly. Why I just don't understand that? the lack of. Why don't we pronounce the the vowels at the end of words? It's like a foreign language there, Joe. It's like, you know. It's uh, not, though. What? It is, but it isn't. It's, if Joe, you spell how do you it, say it? Antipasto? I can't, I can't really speak to it because I'm. Ricotta? Know, White Horse is a very Italian name, but I got to tell you. Really? It's, just, it, it's I, one of. It's a pet they do people pronounce name. all the vowels in Italy. They do. And it, if you go to Italy, they say it the correct way, the way that I'm telling you that we should. Anyway, Correct. that's it. I'm getting off my soapbox. It's dialectical, Mr. Whitecourse. I very much understand. I know. Thank you, <laughs> madam. Um, and I appreciate your um, your help with that. Maria, uh, how, I don't... How you, <laughs> Maria, how's your daughter going to feel when I send her the link, if I can find out who she is and send her the link to you saying that she's struggling to cook right now? What's she going to think? When she's going to laugh. She'll laugh. That? She'll laugh? She'll laugh. She'll right. laugh. I gotta find her email somewhere in the uh, yellow yellow pages. Do they still have that? I'll look for it. Uh, Mary Beth, go for it. Give a shout out to somebody or, or a hug or whatever. There we go. Okay, so very hard to follow up that uh, that comedic relief there, especially um, and also ditto to basically everything everybody said. Um, but um, I would give a high five hug all of the above to my one and only sister um bond between sisters is very strong and you know we text we talk and everything else but i need to give her a big hug especially because this weekend she really um went over and above and beyond to help celebrate my daughter's birthday on saturday she's a music teacher um on long island and she was the uh, the lead car for our birthday parade and played the play happy birthday on her trumpet uh, coming down the block. And so there's nobody like her. And um, I really, really miss her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Scott. Hey no, Narelle. Narelle, sorry. Oh, sorry. My bad. Hey, guys. Uh, I would say big shout out to all my students. I uh, really miss you guys, really miss your energy, your stories, your laugh, uh, your smiles. So big shout out, big hug to all you guys. Beautiful, Scott. Um, I would definitely give a shout out to all my students. Um, you know, especially those students that always stay around at the end of the class to see if they, you know, can help you with anything or just want to talk for a few minutes. I wonder about those kids and, and what they're doing each day. Um, I would also give a shout out to our family in Queens. We haven't been able to see them since, uh, you know, February at this point. Um, our niece's uh, birthday just passed and that was a little bit difficult not being able to go out or invite them over to, to uh, you know, celebrate the birthday. Um, of course we did stuff uh, virtually, but um, it's a little different to have them right, you know, with you in the living room and that kind of thing. Yeah, T-Mac. I would say uh, I'd say shout out to first responders and a lot of people touched on that. Um, this has been heavy for us here and I'm sure it's been heavy for a lot of people at home. Um, but I couldn't imagine having to, to be there on the front lines and then come home to all the craziness at home and distance learning and kids and um, just stress with health and stuff like that. So definitely a shout out to them and uh, they're taking a um, heavy burden of this. So I appreciate and uh, really want to honor their efforts. Great. Thank you. 
All right, language department, that was awesome. Had a lot of fun. Uh, really appreciate you guys jumping in this morning and contributing the way you were, being uh, honest and genuine, and then also uh, funny when when appropriate as well. So um, just also want to close with, listen, we know people who, who might be watching this or uh, others in the hot pod community are being impacted pretty dramatically. Uh, if you've lost someone or somebody's kind of on the edge right now fighting like crazy, we're with you. We, we want to extend that we're here to support you in whatever way is sensible. But we also just uh, have a lot of empathy toward you right now and uh, are sending our, our, our prayers and our spirits towards you in whatever way we can. Um, and and that, that pretty much does it. We will be back on here throughout the week. I think we have some lunches and some uh, other departments coming on as we get going. Have a wonderful week, everybody, or, or fight like crazy to at least in your brain. Tell yourself it's going to be a wonderful week and live it out that way. All right, everybody. Peace out, guys. Bye. Bye. Adios. Good day. Good Bye. day. Yeah. Bye, everybody. All right, guys. Streaming is stopped. Recording is stopping in a second. Stopped. Peace out, everybody.